Here we are at Shop Wheels, Orange County in California. One of my favorite manu wheel manufacturers in the world. We're gonna do a, have a bit of a look at their wheels, we're gonna have a bit of their manufacturing. I'm gonna introduce you to Brandon, general manager. I'm guessing you're here of this business. Yep. So uh, let's, have, let's have a go. Let's do it. I'm Brandon Shop with uh, Shop Wheels and let's take a lap around the shop and see what's going on. So my parents started this company back in 2003 and prior to that my dad was still working in the wheel industry. Uh, my mom wasn't in the industry so much but she went to college and got her business degree and did all that and then they kind of teamed up and came together and started the wheel manufacturing for shot wheels and metal effects motorsports as a whole. Uh, but prior to that my dad had still been in the industry and he had the opportunity to work for Boyd Coddington and Alan Budnick and did some other stuff. He also worked for uh, Ultra Wheel which that was a enormous cast wheel manufacturing plant uh, and then after he did that he came here and started his own thing and it's been 20 years, pretty much the rest is history from there and today we're still making what we believe is the best product that we can make. This is probably the number one seller. Cool. Yeah. Within the last year or two, the fuel has really taken off and especially with the whole cover lock series that we've integrated, there's a million different color combos and choices. When you said the cover lock series, so just explain that, Brandon. So the cover lock series is something that we developed back in 2007 and that's really what kickstarted shot wheels to get it going. So it's got a center nut that threads off here. So you kind of get the center lock look, but it's actually a fully yeah. bolted wheel. Yeah, how good. Because a lot of people would just think that's, yeah, just one center lock, one nut, but there you go, standard wheel. Correct, and then we integrate two dowel pins behind it. That way when you're going down the road, it can't loosen <laughs> up and fly off on the freeway. <laughs> and then there's a lot of different options when it comes to the center nuts and the spindles. We have a three bar knockoff option. We have a spanner option. Uh, and then we do a lot of exposed lug stuff too, where it doesn't have the cover lock series incorporated into it. It's just more of a traditional looking wheel, but with our own flair to it. Yeah. Um, look, and we'll go through when we, on the manufacturing, like I want to cover off the one, one piece, two piece and three piece, why you would have that and the difference between those wheels. So absolutely a clear understanding of if you're, if you're ordering a wheel for your new, for your new project, you'll know what you want. Absolutely. Let's do it. that we manufacture here is made out of 6061 T6 aluminum. And we buy this forging from an outside manufacturer. And we always buy a forging as close to the net shape as possible. And then once we get the forging, it goes inside the lathe and it'll get two operations done to it. It'll get a front side and a back side turning done to it. And I'll show you guys a little bit of that in a second. And once it comes out of the machine, it has a general shape and look to it, but it doesn't have anything to make it fit on the car. So depending on what vehicle it's gonna go on, once it goes through the milling side of it, that's where it's gonna get everything done to it to make it fit on whatever vehicle it's going on. So this is the lathe, and like I said, it's gonna get two operations done to it. So they grip it the first time, and the tool stays stationary, and this will rotate somewhere between like 500 and 1500 RPM, depending on what tool's coming in. But you're just getting the general shape of what it's gonna look like here. So it creates a lot of chips, the chips drop into the conveyor belt, then they go into the chip bin, that all gets recycled and reused eventually. So after it goes through the couple of operations in the lathe, it comes over into the milling department, and this is where it gets all the styling done to it. So this is the fuel shot wheel that we have here, and the difference between a lathe and a mill, inside the mill, the part stays stationary and the tool rotates. It's the complete opposite when it's inside the lathe the part rotates and the tool stays stationary. So you could do a lot more with a mill than you can with a lathe. The lathe just removes material a lot faster. Just wanna to touch on the difference too between convex and concave. A lot of people don't know the difference between it. So 
convex is where it's kind of a bubble shape. And then concave is where it's making a little bit of a U shape. So just depends on what you like and what kind of car it is. Uh, some people want to do concave wheels all the way around. Some people want to do convex wheels all the way around. It's really just what you like and what fits on your vehicle. Right on, so we'll walk back through two-piece welding. Uh, a lot of the stuff that you'll see back here is actually waiting for uh, to be put together. It's all orders for customers, and some of this stuff has already been put together and is just waiting to go through final polishing and packaging. So a lot of this uh, on the pallet racking is just all storage, and it's already been pre-polished, but it still will go back through our polishing shop one more time and get its final color buff. Uh, once it gets its final color buff, it then sits on these pallets for a short while, and then it goes into assembly. So going through assembly, you can kind of take a look down here. It starts with, this is a big one, but it's a single piece hoop with nothing inside of it. And we put this up onto a big rotary heater. So this rotates. And these two torches are powered by propane and air. And it basically creates a big fireball and heats the rim up and expands. And once it is heated up, they wear these big Kevlar gloves and they rotate it over and they set it over the top on this big granite plate. We have a granite plate as well as two steel plates that have been uh, Blanchard ground, so they're extremely flat. And once they take that hot rim and put it over the top of these spacing plates, they will then drop the center inside of the rim. And once it cools down, it basically becomes one piece. So depending on what vehicle it's going on, there's a bunch of different combinations of size spacing plates that, to make it all happen. Um, but they set that here, drop the center inside of it, and it's pretty much ready at that point. The last couple steps before it goes into final packaging is it'll go onto our truing machine over here. So it goes onto our truing machine and they set it to whatever size it may be. There's two rollers that hit each corner and it reads lateral and radial uh, run out. So they will sit here and basically play a game with it for a minute and hit it until everything's parallel. So they use this air hammer right here to hit the back side of the center and get everything all squared up. And the highest tolerance is 30 thousandths combined that we let leave here and the average human hair follicle is about five thousandths, so we're chasing about six hairs. After everything is all squared up and the runout looks good, it then comes on to our welder and they flip the wheel upside down backwards here and this torch sits right in between the backside of the center and the corner of the rim and basically hit the green button and it stitches it all up and welds it together. After it's all welded together, it then goes through polishing one more time to get it all cleaned up and get any scratches out of it that happened during this process. And it gets boxed up and shipped to you guys. So we take a lot of pride in our quality here at Shot Wheels. So even though it's already gone through a few different stages of polishing to get it here into shipping and receiving, we still go through one last final polish and get it to its perfect show quality. So the last step of it is all done completely by hand with a microfiber and some billet polish. They get it all cleaned up and then it'll sit over here for a little bit to get its final inspection done. And then it gets packaged up and dropped into a box. So here's a good side-by-side -side comparison of how it just looks different when it comes to a three-piece wheel as well as all the two-piece wheels. So on a three-piece wheel, you have a lot more color variety that you can choose from because you have the inner barrel and outer barrel, you have a center, you have the bolts, and then when it gets to the Coverlock Series 2, you now have a spindle and a center nut that you can choose all the different colors from. So a lot of guys, you know, will have the center that's one color and then the barrels that are a different color. So just gives you more variety and the three-piece wheel, you have a lot more of a wide range of fitments that you can fit on. It was absolutely amazing to see the quality of wheels, explain the fitment, the difference between monoblock, uh, two-piece, three-piece, and of course the manufacturing. So thank you, Brandon. Thank you thank guys you for, for coming by. Fantastic. I really appreciate it. We've seen a lot more of your wheels down under, I'm sure. I hope so. Cheers. <laughs>